I need to mention something to you guys with this question. If you are following along and doing the complete exam paper with me and you've downloaded the exam paper, this is question 8.1.2. And on the exam paper itself, there's a bit of a mistake. Uh, in the, on the exam, they don't have a two over here. But then, and, and then I did the question and I, I got so stuck, I, I had no idea what to do. And then I looked on their memo and I realized that on the memo, they have a two here. So they must have made a mistake on the day and they would have told all of the students to fix the exam paper. Well, at least we hope they did. <laughs> so this is what the question should look like. There should be a two over here. And so what we need to do with this question is we just need to simplify this. So I wouldn't do anything with the 10 because I mean that's already less than 90, but I would definitely try to reduce those three over there because they are not less than 90. Well, they, they, yeah, they need to be smaller than 90, um, but you also don't want to have these negative angles like that. So we need our cast diagram for that. So you know this is 180 minus, 180 plus, 360 minus. And so let's start with the sin squared of 190. So sin squared of 190, you can think of that as the sin of 190, and then that is squared. And so the 190 is in this quadrant, and so you can write it as sin of 180 plus 10, and then we know that the sin of 180 plus 10, sin is negative in that quadrant, so that just becomes negative sin 10, but then that is squared. And then when you square a negative, it turns out to become positive. And so that becomes the sin squared of 10. The next one will be the cos of negative 145. Now remember that when it's not on the cos diagram, so if it doesn't fit between zero and 360, then you are allowed to add or subtract 360 as many times as you need to. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 360 degrees to this. And that's going to give us the cos of 215 degrees. And then the cos of 215 can be rewritten as 180 plus. And then this just becomes negative cos 35. All right, and then the last one is cos 235. Now that can be rewritten as cos of 180 plus 55. And so that's going to give you negative cos 55 because cos is negative in that quadrant. Now we can go write everything down, so it's just going to become negative cos squared of 10 plus sin squared of 10. Then at the bottom we've got negative cos 35 multiplied by negative cos 55. Okay, now what I would do is I will just multiply these two at the bottom together because then those negatives can cancel, so let's quickly do that. So it'll just end up becoming cos 35 multiplied by cos 55. Now, be careful because what some students do here is they see this and they think, oh, isn't this that thing from grade 11 which tells us that sin squared x plus cos squared x equals to 1? Well, yes, that is true, but this is not that because this one has this awkward little minus over there. But let's rather look on our formula sheet and I want you to identify that what we have at the top here is almost the same as this. It's just that cos is now positive, what's well, the other way around, can you see that? So the way we fix that mathematically is you can take out a negative as a common factor and then you've got cos squared 10 minus sin squared 10, but we can't get rid of that negative because this isn't an equation, so you leave it like that, and then at the bottom we'll talk about that just now. So now at the top we definitely have this piece, so we can rewrite it, so that's going to become negative cos of 20. You see, because if this is alpha, then on the other side it becomes 2 alpha. So if this is 10, then when you rewrite it, it will become 20. Now at the bottom, what I want you to identify, maybe you've already seen this, but these two angles add up to 90 degrees. So there is definitely 
a co function happening there. Whenever it adds up to 90, then there's a co function. You know, like um, sin of 90 minus x is the same as cos x. It's all of those types of things. But what you must remember is if you have like sin 20, for example, that's always the same as cos 70. Or if you have cos of 10, then that's sin 80. Or if you maybe have cos of 5, then that'll be sin of 85, as long as it adds up to 90. So what we can then do is we can change one of them. So I'm going to change this one to sin 55. And then I'm going to leave this one as it is. Now, why did I do that? I did that because I like having sin and cos next to each other when their angles are the same, because then I've got this. Okay. Yes, we don't have the 2 there, but that's okay, because I can easily put a 2 there. All I do is I multiply the top and the bottom by 2. We know that I'm allowed to do that, or we are allowed to do that, because when you multiply top and bottom, then you're technically not really changing anything. And so what we have now at the top is negative 2 cos 20, and then at the bottom, uh, we're gonna, we have this, and we're going to rewrite it as that. So you're going to double the angle, so that's going to become the sin of 110. And then, because it's 110, it needs to be reduced, because it's bigger than 90. As soon as it's bigger than 90, we have to reduce it on the cost diagram. Now, 110 fits into this quadrant, so that's going to be the sin of 180 minus 70. And so that's going to be negative 2 cos 20 over the sin of 70. Now, my word, this is actually quite a long question. All of a sudden, these two add up to 90. So there's a co-function again. I'm going to change the bottom one into the cos of 20. And then all of a sudden, it cancels. And so our final answer is negative 2.